good morning uh, today i have uh, decided to take three stories uh, from the classical myths one is the story of narcissus and uh, echo or eco uh, the second story is that of uh, daedalus and icarus and uh, the third story is that of oedipus if we come to the story of uh, narcissus and eco i am sure you have heard the name of narcissus uh, you have heard the term narcissistic and i am sure you know that narcissus is also a flower well uh, we find that uh, sophisus and uh, liriope who was a river nymph the union it was a forceful union which led to the birth of narcissus and uh, we find that he grew up to be a very very beautiful child and it was to tiresias that his mother took him and in consultation with tiresias it was said that narcissus would live to a ripe old age only if he does not come to know himself now in this i would just like to give you a brief you know idea about tiresias tiresias as you all know was you know the blind seer or the prophet who you know could predict things now he also has a history he was actually given the power to see by zeus and the power that is his blindness was given to him by hera because she did not agree to what he had said uh, when there was a competition between uh, zeus and uh, you know hera but we find that uh, there is another story about uh, how he lost his sight uh, it is said that he had seen athena having a bath and because of that athena had blinded him another quality that we see is that you know he lived as a woman for 7 years because he had heard uh, you know two snakes who were mating and uh, uh, it was because of this that you know he was blinded but then when he came back to that same place and saw the same two snakes mating uh, he was granted his you know power of uh, vision or the sight to prophesize or the uh, you know power to prophesize but anyway coming back to you know narcissus and eco as i said he grew up to be a very handsome boy but the only problem with him was that he was someone who was so proud of himself he had a lot of people who admired him whether it was the males whether it was the females but he was so full of self love that he discarded everyone and did not you know follow or you know return their admire uh, admiration or their admiring glances we find that uh, when he was 16 years old he went for deer hunting and we find that uh, it was there that he was separated from you know the main group at this we have the entrance of echo now coming back to the history of echo she was someone who you know was very very talkative and could would literally repeat after everyone whatever they said now it is said that uh, she was actually punished by uh, juno because whenever jupiter lay with the nymphs juno would come to see where he was and echo would be the one who would you know uh, talk with her so that the nymphs could flee now juno became aware of that and so what she did was she cursed her and 
she curtailed the power of her tongue. Now as I said that Narcissus had come to the forest and was separated you know during the hunt and we find that uh, he had wandered away and of course Echo saw him and fell in love with him but the problem was with her was that she could not you know say whatever she wanted because she could only say the last words. So whatever he said she would repeat you know only the last words and so we find that Narcissus was actually unable to you know answer whatever was being said. Now we find that Echo at one point came out and you know tried to embrace Narcissus but of course Narcissus was not interested and then we find that you know poor Echo was so saddened by this that she crept away into the forest and slowly we find that you know she faded away. Now there is also a story that one of you know the male admirers of you know Narcissus had also cursed him saying that you know uh, since you know Narcissus was not one who you know uh, as I had already mentioned that he was so you know proud of himself and so full of pride you know in his uh, handsomeness or in his beauty he you know the male admirer I was talking about scorned his uh, love and uh, you know he also said that Narcissus would not be able to gain his loved one and we find that Nemesis heard him and she said that you know his prayer would be granted. So we find that Narcissus now you know wandered through the forest and it so happened that you know he saw himself in a stream and the moment he saw himself in the stream he fell in love with himself and so we find that you know the prophecy that had been made by Tiresias that uh, he would live to a ripe old age only if he does not come to know himself you know came to the fore. So we find that he wandered around the forest, uh, looked at himself, uh, tried to reach into the water but of course you know the ripples disturb the whole scene and then we find that when this happened uh, he slowly slowly you know faded away and then ultimately we find that uh, you know till the end echo was with him and you know even uh, repeated his last words alas and then of course we find you know, that you know it, uh, sorry Narcissus vanished and of course uh, there is also a story about how you know when his uh, corpse was taken uh, it was not found but in its place uh, you know a beautiful white flower with a yellow center was found and uh, so whenever we uh, you know think of uh, Narcissus we uh, you know automatically you know know of the flower that is related to him and so uh, this is the story of uh, you know poor Narcissus and Echo. I would uh, next uh, like to talk to you about the story of uh, Daedalus and Icarus. Uh, I'm sure you may have heard the story of Icarus. Maybe you uh, studied it uh, you know while you were in school about the man who made wings and flew. Uh, anyway coming back to Daedalus uh, I have to go to the story of uh, you know uh, Minos too, who was the king of Crete. Uh, he happened to be a very proud and uh, selfish king and uh, he decided that he would uh, you know build a 
temple to Poseidon. So he uh, prayed to him to send him uh, a bull for sacrifice. Poseidon sent a very beautiful white bull but what Minos did was that instead of sacrificing the white bull that was sent to him, he replaced it with another uh, you know, bull and sacrificed that. Poseidon was uh, really very angered by what happened. So he uh, you know, punished uh, not Minos but his wife saying that you know, the, his wife would fall in love with a bull. It so happened that uh, she fell in love with the bull and so she took the help of uh, Daedalus and he put her inside you know a cow which he had built and uh, you know concealed her in that and we find that uh, she gave birth to a minotaur. I do not know whether you have heard of uh, minotaurs but it is uh, uh, it has a man's body and the head of a bull. And now we find that Daedalus built a labyrinth. I hope you know what a labyrinth is. It is a maze, a maze where you cannot find your way out until and unless you know which way to go in and which way you have to come out. And we find that uh, in this labyrinth, right at the nether or the last tip, the minotaur was hidden and it was only Daedalus and Minos who knew the way out. Now it so happened that uh, the king of Athens, Aegeus, he sent a message to Minos saying that his son Androgenus had been killed. Now Minos was very very sad but he was also angered so he decided that you know he would conquer Athens. What happened was that as he conquered uh, Athens it was decided that you know the city would send him seven maids and seven youths. The first year passed off and the maids and the youths were sent. In the second year the you know maids and youths were sent again as a tribute and we find that Theseus was sent in this second group. In the second year, the tribute was sent again and seven maids and seven youths arrived. In this batch, we find that Theseus was sent. Minos took an extreme dislike to Theseus and so he sent a boxer to fight with Theseus but of course Theseus defeated him and we find that the king's daughter also fell in love with him. I had mentioned that Minos was from Crete whereas Daedalus was from Athens and so he decided to help Theseus and showed him the way he could get out of the maze by killing the Minotaur. So King Minos realized that none other than Daedalus could have helped Theseus to escape. So in order to have his revenge, he punished Daedalus by putting him into a cell. Daedalus of course managed to get out of the cell but he realized 
that it would be very difficult to get out of Crete. Now Crete at that point of time was, had become very well known as a uh, country with immense navigation power. Navigation power in the sense that you know they had built a lot of ships, there was a lot of seafarers and he realized that it would be very difficult to get out of Crete through this route. So he kept on watching from his window and looking out he saw the seagulls flying and it was then that he was inspired. So he started collecting all the feathers that he could find and started building wings for himself and his son Icarus. Soon the wings were ready and so he tested it and he realized that when the wind blew into it that is he could fly with the air currents. So one day they decided to fly out of Crete. Constantly he had warned Icarus to stay at a height where he was not too close to the sun because the wings were made of feathers and had been joined together by wax and the intense heat of the sun would melt the wax. But Icarus being a boy forgot his father's instructions. In fact, you can say that it went in through one year and came out the other year. And on the day that they decided to fly, Icarus was so happy to be flying that soon he forgot that the speck in the distance that he could see was the Dallas. In fact, he went on soaring higher and higher and of course the one thing that he had been warned of came to pass. The heat of the sun melted his feathers and soon Icarus naturally came to his death. Poor Daedalus looked everywhere for Icarus and the only traces that you he could see were the feathers that were left behind. So in the island that he found where he found the feathers he named it Icaria and finally landing at the oracle of Delphi he put up his wings and promised never to fly again. And so, this is the story of Icarus and Daedalus. Uh, had Daedalus been a little more careful, maybe this would have not come to pass. But then of course, as I said, being a young boy and having got the power to fly with the wings that his father had built, he forgot what instructions his father had given him and ultimately he swooped down to his death. Uh, the next story that uh, I would like to tell you about is that of Oedipus. Many of you may have heard of the play Oedipus Rex which was written by Sophocles. Uh, to come to his story you will find that all of uh, Oedipus's uh, ancestors ruled uh, Thebes. Uh, his uh, father's name was uh, Laius and his mother was Jocasta. Uh, you have various names you know for uh, Oedipus's mother but then uh, we will uh, stick to Jocasta. Now uh, there was a curse that Oedipus's uh, father was not to give you know birth or that is Jocasta was not to have a son because that son 
was to be the cause of his father's death. In fact, if you look into the stories of uh, Aeschylus or Euripides, you will find that uh, an oracle had told Laius not to father a child. But then um, we find that uh, Laius did not, you know, listen to what had been told to him and ultimately gave, you know, Jocasta gave birth to the child that was Oedipus. And we find that after his birth, he was exposed so that, you know, nature would take its course and ultimately he would die in that exposure. And we find that his ankles were tied up and it is from his swollen ankles that he got the name Oedipus. Now there are actually two stories. One story is that he was uh, you know, thrown into the sea and he was found by the wife of King Polybus who you know took him in and brought him up. And of course, we have the second story where he was exposed on Mount uh, Cithaeron and the Corinthian shepherds looked after him and finally he was taken to uh, King Polybus. But whatever it is, we find that uh, in Sophocles' play, uh, as Laius ordered a servant to, you know, expose the child and he was given to the shepherd. And we find that Oedipus go up with the shepherds and the story goes that he went in search of, you know, the horses that had been stolen. And we find that uh, when he came looking for the horses, uh, he, you know, somehow reached Thebes. And another story goes that one of the Corinthians said that he was a foundling. He was so shocked to know that he was a foundling that he left Thebes. So we have the two stories, one that you know he left in search of the horses and the other that you know he left because he was heard to hear that he was a foundling. And he also was told that he would be the cause of his father's death. Thinking that uh, he, you know, was the son of King Polybus, he came away and as he was returning from the uh, Delphic oracle where he was told that he would kill his father, he happened to meet uh, Polyphontes and Laius. And, uh, since Polyphontus, you know, blocked his way as he was coming, uh, in his anger, Oedipus slew both Polyphontes and Laius. And thinking he was, you know, the son of Polybus, he went into voluntary exile. And uh, this happened on the road to Thebes. Now, we have another story, all right, that. Uh, as he was on the way to Thebes, he met the Sphinx. Again, um, I'm sure you have seen pictures of the Sphinx, which is, you know, half woman and half lion, uh, the Egyptian Sphinx, if you have seen it. And uh, we find that he was asked to answer a riddle. And it was then that he was able to answer the riddle that was asked by the Sphinx. So he killed the Sphinx and this helped you know to free 
Thebes from the curse of the Thebans. And we find that since uh, Laius had been killed, the widow of Laius, that is Jocasta, she was, you know, married to uh, Oedipus. So, in actuality, we find that, you know, the oracle had spoken the truth, but Oedipus did not know that Laius was his father because he was already under the impression that he was the son of King Polybus and he had come away from Polybus thinking that he would not take any action against the king, that is he would not kill King Polybus. And soon we find that the city of Thebes was plagued by a famine. And we find that when an oracle was consulted, the oracle said that the killer of Laius has to be punished. If anyone has read the play of uh, Sophocles, uh, Oedipus the king, you will see how beautifully the whole uh, you know scene is brought out oedipus is you know worried about what is happening to thebes and you will also see that what is happening unknowingly he is the cause of the plague anyway uh, he again goes to tiresias now the name of Tiresias is you know already familiar to you. So Tiresias does not wish you know to answer and we find that he asks Creon to you know approach Tiresias again. Tiresias is brought to uh, court and since he avoids answering, uh, you know, the question, Jocasta also casts, you know, her doubts about Tiresias's power, saying that he was the one who had predicted that Laius would be killed by his son. Now, when this happens, we find that uh, there are again two stories. One, it mentions that Laius was killed by uh, brigands at a crossroad. And we find that when Oedipus asks for a description, he realizes that he was the one who killed uh, Laius. In the meantime, we find that news comes to him that Polybus is, uh, you know, has died but by natural causes and he realizes that he was a foundling and it is then that the whole truth comes you know to the fore that he is actually the killer of Laius and Jocasta realizes that what had been prophesied has also come to pass because we see that Laius was killed by Oedipus and she has wedded her own son. So she goes inside the palace and commits suicide and 
Oedipus blinds himself and the story comes to pass that he settles in Attica. Now there is something that you know I would like to read to you you know from here. Uh, very small. The account that is given of the finding of the child leaves Jocasta with no doubts. Her own son has killed his father and she has committed incest with him. She flees into the palace and kills herself. Oedipus then blinds himself. However, uh, Sophocles' version was uh, modified by Euripides in a lost play. In this play, Creon sets up a cons conspiracy against Oedipus, whom uh, you know he takes as a usurper. He arranges to have him uh, convicted of the murder of Laius and then to have him blinded. But Polybus's wife arrives with the news of her husband's death. From her account of the discovery of the baby Oedipus on Citheron, uh, Jocasta realizes that her second husband is her own son. As in the preceding version, she commits suicide and in the epic version of the Oedipus legend, Oedipus stays on the throne and dies in the course of a war against uh, Erginus and Minions. But again in the work of the tragedians, we find that uh, uh, Oedipus is banished from the city and of course is accompanied by his daughter Antigone. Uh, as his two sons have refused to intervene in his favor and they in turn are cursed by Oedipus and finally we find that Oedipus comes to settle in the village of Colonus in Attica uh, where he finally dies. An oracle had declared that the land which contains the tomb of Oedipus will be blessed by the gods and so Creon and Polybus, uh, sorry Polynices had uh, separately tried to persuade uh, Oedipus to uh, go back to Thebes but then uh, King Oedipus since he was uh, so hospitably received by King Theseus decided that his uh, ashes should stay in Attica. Uh, does we see how you know the oracle uh, came to pass and how you know the story of Oedipus tells us how he kills his own father, uh, lies with his mother and then finally uh, has to kill himself when he discovers the truth. So there are a number of versions of the story but then uh, the uh, last version that I gave you of the tragedians where we find that Sophocles leaves with Antigone and settles down in Attica where he finally dies and you know his ashes uh, stay there and it is supposed to be good for you know the land which contains the ashes.